here I've got a nice integral for you. And this is from, you guessed it, the integral suggester. So our final goal is to calculate the integral from zero to infinity of sine x over e to the x plus one. And we're gonna use the following infinite sum as a tool, which we will prove. And that is the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n over n squared plus one is equal to half pi, the hyperbolic cosine evaluated at pi minus one. Okay, so let's get to this. And we will derive this using the Fourier expansion of e to the x. So we can write e to the x as a naught plus the cosine sum. So this will be the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of a n cos n x plus the sine sum. So that'll be the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of b n sine n x. And then from standard results involving Fourier series, we can calculate these coefficients by calculating certain definite integrals. So a naught can be calculated by one over two pi times the integral from minus pi up to pi of e to the x dx. You can think of that as e to the x times cosine zero x if you wanna make it look more like these guys right here. Okay, but this is fairly straightforward to calculate as the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So this will give us e evaluated at the upper end point minus e evaluated at the lower end point all over two times pi. So there we have it, e to the pi minus e to the minus pi over two times pi. Now we can go about calculating a sub n, and a sub n is equal to one over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the x cos n x dx. So notice here we divide by pi instead of two pi, that's just how these things are constructed. And we're not gonna get into those details. And now I'm gonna calculate this integral using a fairly stylized approach. And this approach isn't something that you'd come up with immediately, but maybe like a second draft or a final draft after you've worked through it once or twice. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'll write it as one over pi times the integral of, let's see, one over n squared plus one times the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the x cosine x dx plus n squared over n squared plus one of the same integral. So that'll be the integral from minus pi up to pi of e to the x cosine nx dx. Great. So all I've done here is separated out this single integral into two copies with coefficients that add to the number one. So notice if I add these two, two coefficients, I get n squared plus one over n squared plus one, that's obviously equal to one. So next, I'll take this second copy and I'll perform integration by parts. So that means we need to choose u and we need to choose dv. So how would we like to choose that? Well, I'm going to choose u so that it's equal to e to the x. That means dv will be equal to cos nx dx. Now, taking the derivative here, we see that du is e to the x dx. And then taking the antiderivative, we see that v is equal to 1 over n times sine of nx. By reversing the chain rule and then using the fact that the derivative of sine is cosine. Now before we move on to the next board, let's recall the standard formula for integration by parts is the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So we'll jump to the next board where we have replaced this integral which I'm boxing in blue with the appropriate integration by parts result based off of this substitution in green. Okay, on the last board, we started calculating our coefficients a and for our Fourier series of e to the x. 
And after a step of integration by parts, we end up with the following equation. So we've got a sub n is one over pi times this huge thing. So that's one over n squared plus one, the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the x cosine nx plus n over n squared plus one. So let's recall that used to be n squared over n squared plus one, but taking the antiderivative of our cosine nx gave us an n in the denominator that canceled that. Then we have this term, which was like our u times v term outside of an integral, and then our v du term inside of an integral. Now I'd like to notice that if I evaluate this at pi, I get zero because sine of n pi is zero as n is a positive integer. Furthermore, if I evaluate at the lower bound, I also get zero. So that means I can take all of this and just cancel it down to zero. And then we're left with just this bit down here, which is an integral that looks an awful lot like that. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's maybe clean this up by bringing this up to this first line. Okay, so now we've got something that we can work with nicely. So I'm gonna perform integration by parts on this second integral in the same manner that I did before. So I'll take u and set it equal to e to the x. So that means du is equal to e to the x dx just by taking the derivative. I'll take dv and that will be sine nx dx, which means v is a minus one over n cosine nx. Great, that's just from taking the derivative and the antiderivative as necessary. And just to reiterate, all of this substitution is occurring on this second integral right here. Okay, so let's copy down what we have. So a sub n is one over pi, and then we have one over n squared plus one here, the integral from minus pi up to pi of e to the x cosine nx dx. So that's just coming down for the ride. And then minus n over n squared plus one times whatever we get from integration by parts on this integral. So let's see what it'll be. So it'll be u times v, so that's going to be minus 1 over n e to the x cos nx. That needs to be evaluated from minus pi up to pi. Then minus the integral v du. So notice the minus sign will cancel out and we'll be left with plus 1 over n times the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the x cos nx dx. Great. Okay, so now let's start to simplify this a little bit. So I can have this minus sign come through, cancel this minus sign and change this from a plus to a minus. Furthermore, everything has a factor of n squared plus one in the denominator. So I can pull that out of the whole thing. So I have this is one over pi times n squared plus one. And then left over inside will be the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the x cos nx dx. That's from this first term. Then let's see what's left over from this term. Well, I took the n squared plus one out. Then the minus and the minus cancel, the n and the n cancel. That'll just leave us with plus e to the x cos nx evaluated from minus pi up to pi. Then again, we took the n squared plus one out. This n will cancel with this n, and then we'll have a minus sign. That'll be minus the integral from minus pi up to pi of e to the x cos nx dx. Great. So we have all of that. But notice we carefully split up our original integral for a reason. And that reason is so that this guy right here and this guy right here will cancel and we no longer have an integral. So this cancels with this, and then all we're left to do is this evaluation. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna give us. So we'll have one over pi times n squared plus one times, let's see, it'll be e to the pi times cosine of nx, but let's notice that cosine of nx is minus one to the n, as n is a positive integer. Then we'll have another minus 
minus 1 to the n e to the minus pi. So that's what we're left with here. Then furthermore, we can bring that minus 1 to the n out, and we're left with minus 1 to the n e to the pi minus e to the minus pi all over pi times n squared plus 1. And that's a final version for our coefficient a sub n. Okay, so let's start the next board off with our Fourier expansion of e to the x, and we'll see where we can go from there. So up to this point, we've calculated that e to the x has a Fourier expansion given by e to the pi minus e to the minus pi over 2 pi, and then e to the pi minus e to the minus pi over pi times this sum, which is alternating with coefficients of minus 1 to the n over n squared plus 1 cosine nx. And then we've got a sine term, which we have not calculated. And in fact, we will not need to calculate for our purposes. So now, what do we want to do from here? Well, we'll evaluate this at x equals 0. So I'll write it like this. So let's take x approaching 0. Obviously, everything is like continuous and stuff, so we don't really need to carefully take a limit. But I think writing it like this is nice. So if x is shooting off towards 0, all of these terms will be sine of 0. But sine of 0 is 0, so that means all of this goes off towards 0. Furthermore, we know that cosine of 0 is 1, so that means that all of these turn out to be 1. And then obviously e to the 0 is also 1. So let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have 1 is equal to e to the pi minus e to the minus pi over pi times the quantity. Well, let's see, we've got a half from this right here and then a plus the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n squared plus 1. Then maybe this is about as far as I'm going to take this because this object right here is exactly 2 times the hyperbolic sign evaluated at pi. But now solving for the sum will give us exactly this tool right here. Notice that 1 over the hyperbolic sine is the hyperbolic cosecant. So it's not so hard to go from this equation to this equation. Okay, so we've got it. And now we're ready to use this to calculate our goal integral. Okay, so the first manipulation I want to do on this goal integral is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by e to the minus x. And that's so that I'm left with something that can be expanded as an infinite series. So that's going to give us the integral from 0 up to infinity of e to the minus x times sine of x over 1 plus e to the minus x dx. Now I can think about this 1 plus e to the minus x in the denominator as being something that can be expanded, like I said, as a geometric series. So that'll give me something like this. I'll have the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x sine x. So that's like my numerator. And then I'll have minus 1 to the n e to the minus nx dx. And that's because I can think about this as like 1 minus negative e to the minus x. So that'll put it into a form where we can expand it a little bit more easily. Okay, so now let's move some things around a little bit. So I've got this is the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n. I can take that out. And then I'll have the integral from 0 up to infinity of e to the minus n plus 1 times x times sine of x dx. So next up, I want to re-index this a little bit. So I'll re-index this by replacing n with n minus 1. So that means my sum will start at n equals 1 instead of n equals 0. So that's going to give me the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity. I'm still going to write this as minus 1 to the n. I'll just bring a minus sign out front so I can do that and maintain the correct signage here. Then I'll have the integral from 0 up to infinity of e to the minus nx times sine x dx. 
Now calculating this integral is essentially the same as calculating that integral we had before. So I'm not gonna calculate that. So maybe I'll just put here that this is for homework. It's the same as before. I urge you to maybe work through it on your own if you're psyched. Furthermore, I think maybe make a slick, very stylized solution like I did if you're interested in something like that. Okay, so what we'll get is negative the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of minus one to the n over n squared plus one. That shouldn't be too much of a surprise because that is part of the tool that we already constructed. Okay, so now putting the value of this sum in that we just found in our tool, we have the following value for our goal integral. This is one half and then one minus pi times the hyperbolic cosecant evaluated at pi. So like I said, that's the final value for our goal integral and that's a good place to stop.